Hey, it's Jonathan with Maz Ocean here on the dock uh, working on an Aquila 44. We are installing a 12 battery lithium system, 24 volt batteries wired in series to make 48 volts. Uh, along with that, we're going to be installing two Quattro 48 volt 10,000 watt inverters and a really large solar array. The boat is uh, doing the great loop trip and the owners are looking to get a real off-grid setup so that they can run the boat uh, as often as possible without generators. Along with that, we're doing some uh, high output 48 volt alternators so that when they are motoring, they're charging up the battery bank so that at night when they get to anchor or dock up, they don't need to be worrying about plugging in or running their generators to keep the boat operational. If you step on board, as you can see, um, we've got guys on board doing some stuff. The boat has been uh, all protected with cover guard. Uh, we make sure that when we're doing a big project like this, we protect the boat so that uh, you know, we limit the damage that occurs, especially with a big project like this. We're going to be bringing a lot of heavy equipment on board, moving a lot of things around, pulling a lot of wires and so forth. So as you can see, if we step inside, We've started to open up the boat um, because we got to get wires pulled all over the place in terms of to our battery banks, to our quattros in the engine room, to our BMS, which is going to be centrally located here in the salon area. And we'll kind of take a walk through and kind of show you where the plan is to install all the various pieces of equipment. So let's start up forward over here. Down in this locker, as you can see, we've started pulling some heavy gauge 4.0 battery cable. Our battery management system, BMS, is going to be installed down in here. This is currently where the 12 volt distribution and AC distribution connections are all located. So we're going to keep all our distribution in a similar location to what's already on board. Um, BMS charge controllers for the huge solar array are all going to go in this location. From here, we're going to be running wires back to the starboard engine room and that's where we're going to be installing our two large 48 volt 10,000 watt quattros to run the boat's 122 40 volt system off of the battery bank. We are looking at the DC schematic for the Aquila 44 lithium system and let's take a look over here. First thing we're going to be looking at is the MG BMS battery management system. This basically is the brain of the system. This device over here is communicating with the battery can and as you can see by the blue lines on this line drawing, that is your CAN bus communications. So each of the batteries is daisy chained together and ultimately all of those feed into the BMS and that's all 12 of these batteries are communicating to the BMS. Basically, this is a small example of what is being done in the project on the boat, obviously on the boat. This is the display of this equipment. Here the batteries are in intelligent network communication that goes all the way to this equipment, then comes this equipment, and then it processes all the information and combines it between Victron and MG. A single complete system and very easy monitoring system from wherever you are. We have two inverters at 48 volts of 10 kilowatts each. We have the MG distributor, we have the Surf One Victron controller, and we have 12 batteries like this one. So they are providing the BMS with information about their health, their state of charge, what's going on on each of those batteries. On the MG display, you can actually go in and look at each individual battery and go and see the cell voltages of each battery giving you a real clear idea of are those cells balanced in the battery, are those batteries healthy? Well, in this project we are going to install 12 lithium batteries. They are, they are big, they are heavy and, and we don't have space. We are going to install six on port, six on starboard. We have to make a shelf. In this bulge we're going to be putting four of the six batteries per side down in the bulge area here. We're building a custom shelf to fit the batteries. Of course, saving space on boats and keeping storage available is super important to all boat owners. So, you know, after spending a few hours going through the boat, looking at options in terms of locations, we determined we would be able to squeeze in four of our six batteries on the starboard side into this location. The other two batteries for starboard will be located in this little locker over here. 
Uh, so we will be taking up a little bit of storage, but we are maintaining the huge storage under the bed here for the owners. It was a big priority for them to keep as much storage available on the boat as possible. So kind of thinking out of the box and finding places to put the equipment was really important for the owners so that we limited stealing their very, very important storage space. These batteries are super good for me. The size they have, the load capacity they possess uh, is absolutely incredible. They have the convenience of lithium batteries. The thing is, loading and unloading is super fast. And they are less likely to have an acid leak. This is the, uh, the best right now. Some of the real advantages that the owner is going to get out of having lithium installed rather than traditional AGMs or lead acid type batteries. Number one is your discharge capacity. With regular AGMs, lead acids in general, you know, you can really only use up to about 50% of the total battery's capacity. So let's for example use a 200 amp hour battery, that means you can only use 100 amp hours of that battery before you need to recharge. So you literally are increasing your capacity from say on a 200 amp hour system, which would be then on a 200 amp hour you're going to get more like 150, 160 amp hours out of the battery. One of the other real huge advantages with lithium is how quickly they can charge. Traditional batteries like a very specific charge algorithm um, where you start off in bulk. That normally goes up until around the 80 to 85 percent point. So you're charging pretty rapidly at that point. But once you reach that 80 to 85 percent point, you go into an absorption. And that really backs off the charging of the batteries. So that last sort of 15 to 20 percent that you are charging the batteries you slow down the process significantly so to charge up a battery bank agm lead acid your runtime of a generator or being plugged into shore power is significantly longer than it would be for a lithium bank lithium charge pretty much in bulk all the way up to almost 100 percent and the mg batteries that we are using actually their charge profile we actually set charges to what we call a constant voltage setting. And that means it just constantly charges at max amperage at a constant voltage until those batteries reach 100%. So your charge time is significantly dropped. So those are two of the real big advantages. There is also then the aux can, which is the auxiliary can, which then is communicating with the Victron equipment on the boat. And that is feeding into the servo device on the boat. Here's the MG Victor's display. Here we can see uh, the AC input, what the inverter is generating, what it's drawing from the battery or vice versa when charging. This is like the computer where all the information is processed, it's sent to him and he decides through intelligent processors how it's going to handle the loads. And that servo device is then also connected to the rest of the Victron equipment, either by VE CAN or VE bus. These are the boost bars we have here to connect multiple batteries in parallel. And being able to bring it to the main MG distribution, normally on the boat, they connect directly here when it's only four batteries. In this case, in this project we're executing, uh, we have 12 batteries we're going to have some independent boost bars and we're going to go uh, parallel directly to the MG distribution. So basically, the BMS is the hub and the brain and is communicating with all the equipment on the boat. It's a system that transfers a lot of current, so it will use many heavy cables. And the boat is tight, everything, but that has been the biggest challenge making such a larger system work in 44 feet. One of the big things about this is that lithium are very sensitive to when they are over discharged or overcharged and at any given point they may decide it's time to stop discharging or time to stop charging. This CAN bus system is the way that it communicates with all the peripheral equipment that hey alternators, the regulators that are regulating the alternators, we're fully charged, we don't want any more charge coming into the batteries. It's going to communicate with those alternator regulators in this scenario wake speeds and it's going to tell them to stop charging. That will then keep the batteries healthy. Same with discharging, say you are offshore power, off generator and your quattros 
are running the boat's air conditioning, owner falls asleep, or well, it's the middle of the night and the batteries have now reached a point that they need to stop discharging, the BMS is going to tell those quattros, hey, you cannot use any more of the battery capacity, we need to shut down, and it's going to then shut down those quattros and prevent the batteries from being damaged by over discharging. If we then go up to the top over here, we have the 248, 12,000, 230 volt quattros installed on the boat. These two devices are not only inverters, but they're also battery chargers. So they will charge the lithium in the boat either has a generator running or is plugged into shore power. But the big purpose of them ultimately is when off grid, no generator, no, no shore power, that they are providing the entire boat with 120, 240 volts, running air conditioning, uh, stove tops, uh, microwaves, also providing power to the original boat charging system so that you can run your 12 volt systems battery chargers off of the 48 volt bank. So big key component, big piece of equipment, does a lot of work. Then if we go down off to the right over here, we go down to the alternators. On this boat, we're installing some 48 volt high output alternators. Each of them rated at 130 amps at 48 volts. So pretty powerful alternators. Now, of course, given that lithium has a very specific way it likes to be charged, these are regulated by the WS500, Wake Speed 500 devices. And those basically are telling the alternators how much current to produce, what voltage to be operating at, and basically control their output. Another huge aspect on this boat is our solar system. As you can see, we are going to be installing a pretty large solar arch on this boat, comprised of, what are we looking at here, 2, 4, 8, uh, 10, 12, 14 panels with seven charge controllers controlling and uh, regulating the charge coming from the solar. So not only are we going to have high output alternators charging the batteries, we're also going to have a massive solar array able to produce a lot of power and push power into the batteries um, on this specific installation. So on this boat, not only are we doing the big lithium solar alternator job, but we're also doing just little odd jobs for the owner. Things such as over here, you can see we installed these handrails uh, for the owner for boarding. Uh, it just required two rod holders be installed on both starboard and port, and then these custom rod holder type handrails that drop into the rod holder, and it just makes boarding the boat a little bit easier. If we go up to the flybridge, we're also installing uh, a couple of 12 volt outlets for the fridges the owner has supplied. He's got one big fridge and one big uh, freezer that he wanted to be installed up here. So we're installing dedicated 12 volt outlets for that. And had to figure out, of course, the power supply to those up here. We're also doing things like installing a couple of like handrails and towel rails, nothing special. But you know, owner had a couple of other little wish items that he wanted us to handle. So we're just jumping on that and getting that done for him at the same time as we're doing the big lithium solar project.